try to find out why he's lying curiosity is a useful tool in parenting my 15 year old kid is constantly getting into mischief he's a wonderful youngster who pushes the boundaries and is learning to mature but being caught with an e-cigarette at school not for the first time has brought things ahead my husband and i have been summoned to be what appears to be chastised for being horrible parents for the past two days what has become clear is the incessant lying, not only about major issues, but also about minor insignificant issues. I understand that lying to parents is common, I recall lying to my parents when I was a teenager. The falsehoods on top of lies, on the other hand, have shattered all trust. It's not just at home, it's also in school. Anything he says, I believe, should be taken with a grain of salt. It's taxing, and it feels as though we're caught in the pain with no way out. How can we re-establish trust? I'm not against counseling, but I'm not sure what I'm looking for. Is it possible that I'm exaggerating, and is there anything we can do to help ourselves? I'm sure the school doesn't think you're awful parents, but I believe it will take a little more. And your reply reveals a lot about you. If you feel embarrassed when your kid is summoned to the school, we may assume he feels the same way. Instead of reverting to shame, I'd encourage you to practice being interested in why he's lying. In parenting, curiosity is a more valuable tool. I'm wondering if your son doesn't have faith in you. Adolescents lie because of a stress protection mechanism, explains adolescent specialist psychotherapist Anthea Benjamin, psychotherapy.org.uk. It might be for a variety of reasons, including fear of disappointing you or embarrassment. Lies might be used to protect themselves from the truth of how tough and out of control life seems. Lies may also be used to separate oneself from a situation or from a person. You didn't elaborate on the nature of these falsehoods. If they claim I didn't do anything, shame is almost always involved. If they add to or create a scenario I did this, it might be a symptom of dissatisfaction and wishing life was different. Both require investigation. Loss of trust is a major deal, and I understand it's tiring, as you say, to feel like you can't trust someone. Benjamin wondered if there was something wrong with your kid, a cause of stress, perhaps at school, that you weren't aware of. Instead of trying to catch your kid out, you may use the aforementioned curiosity to your advantage. According to Benjamin, you may need to decide to choose your fights. Could you sometimes overlook the falsehood, but not the child, and consider it as a method of communication? Even if you know he's lying, isn't it more vital to cultivate your relationship with him and try to reconnect with him? You may be planting more distrust between you and your pursuit of the truth. You also inquired about how to re-establish trust. Talking incessantly isn't always the best solution, especially because your youngster clearly finds this difficult. Loki, schedule things with him, that you know you'll do and where you can have happy times together, Benjamin said. And when having deep and meaningful talks isn't a must. Something like bowling, when there isn't much conversation and everyone is focused on the same something else. Feeling like you are always letting him down must be damaging his self-esteem, so try to focus on what he does right. Is there anything he enjoys doing, and if so, where can he do it? While it would be nice for him to have a private outlet, I'm not sure whether he requires more than a school counselor, assuming there is one. Benjamin also pondered if his school was a good fit for him. Adolescence can be such a tricky time. Teens learn independence and detach from their parents, and in turn, parents can feel rejected.